And beyond that space station, there are other developments in China's space exploration program. Let's bring in Keith Cowing, who joins us via Skype. He's an astrobiologist and the editor of online publication NASAWatch.com. So, Keith, great to have you on. I um, want to ask you about something that's gotten a lot of buzz lately, the Tiangong-1 crashing back down to Earth uh, in just a couple of weeks or so. And I want to show everyone this crash zone that is projected. It covers a lot of... Uh, of the Earth and several heavily populated cities. Should we be worried? Well, no and yes. I mean, th we've been throwing things into space for half a century now, and they always eventually come back. So it's not unusual. And you can track these things and get a good idea when they may come down. Uh, for something this large, the best guess we will probably get is a few days out, we'll know within one or two or three orbits, which means it can go around the Earth three times before it hits. And if you look at the map, a lot of it's water, and you know, usually, you know, statistically, you, you know, the things land in water or in remote areas. But I get the impression that if they thought that a, a, a city or a town was in the direct path, they'd probably have several days' notice uh, that that was going to happen. So we're looking at uh, March 29th to April 9th is is a window that's been reported what's a likely scenario here and and you mentioned all the hardware above us how common is this type of occurrence well this is a big spacecraft it's uh, 8,000 kilos 18,000 pounds and we haven't had something this big come in um, uh, on purpose since uh, oh I guess Mir uh, the Russian space station came in uh, about 15 years ago uh, so normally things are a bit smaller, and because it is this large, it has some heavy pieces such as some tanks and some rocket engines that may weigh a couple hundred kilos when they hit the Earth. So, you know, it's not unprecedented except for the fact that it's rather large. But because it is large and because you and I are talking about it and everybody else is talking about it, I think an extra amount of attention is going to be put towards knowing exactly where it is and where it's going to come in. Yeah, and that, that all being said, I mean, will all of it come down or could some of it uh, burn up on the way in. What can we learn from all this? Well, most of it will burn up. And this, again, we've launched thousands of satellites, so we've got a lot of expertise watching them burn up. And so most of it will just become plasma and, and won't pose a hazard to anybody, or the pieces will be rather small. But what can we learn from this? Um, I'd like to say there's a pragmatic aspect to this, and that is, um, you know, as we China, America, Russia, Europe, start launching more things into space, it's going to become a, a space traffic issue. And, you know, we're going to have to stop and think about whether we want the stuff crashing down or if we should be a little smarter and find a way to keep the stuff up there and find other uses for it. And Keith, um, you know, China has a lot of big goals and big space ambitions. What do you make of some of the upcoming uh, items on board, landing a soft probe on the far side of the moon, uh, all the investment in the Beidou satellite system? I want to get your, your read on, on what's ahead. Well, you know, the, for me personally, the, the exciting thing is uh, uh, Chengyi 5 uh, going to the, 4 and 5, uh, going to the moon to the far side, uh, to landing in places that you know, nobody's ever tried before. Um, you always learn something where you go somewhere that no one's been before. Uh, but I also am just very interested in the space station itself and, you know, what it will be doing and how it will be weaved into a larger program for China. I know we over here, as I, I watch NASA, there's always a question of what is our, our country's national policy and strategy. And some people think we may have one. We, some people may think we don't necessarily have one. Uh, and it would be interesting to see where China places its priorities, whether they're going to just do what everybody else is doing or pick interesting things that other people haven't tried for a while. All right. Keith Cowling, always great to hear your take. Thanks so much for joining us.